Hi friends, so I have you propped up in front of my bookshelves. Um, I was looking through Goodreads and uh, my girlfriend like was adding a bunch of books and the type of, of books that she was adding was really interesting. Um, lots of Otessa Moshfeg, um, fuck I can't remember, women eating. There just was a, a vibe and I liked it. So I texted her, I'm like, I don't know like what you're in, like reading or into right now, but I like the vibe. And she said that it's weird books for weird girls, uh, like a TikTok trend for book recommendations. So I watched a couple of them and I have one of the books and I was thinking, hmm, that would be fun. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna do um, a reading vlog over however long I feel like to read some weird books for weird girls. Um, and then I was almost thinking I could do like a fantasy romance, like monster romance version. Um, Cause I've definitely read some weird stuff. <laughs> so um, I think that could be kind of fun. And I'm gonna grab the books I saw. This was definitely one of them, Night Bitch, oh my god, Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. Oh gosh, when did I pick this up? I picked this up a while ago. This is following an artist turned stay-at-home mom and she becomes convinced she's turning into a dog. An ambitious mother puts her career on hold to stay at home with her newborn son, but the experience does not match her imagination. Two years later, she steps into the bathroom for a break from her toddlers. Oh, the puppy. Oh, I got two of them, hi friend. Hi. Two years later, she steps into the bathroom for a break from a toddler's demands, only to discover a dense patch of hair on the back of her neck. As she studies herself in the mirror, her canines suddenly look sharper than she remembers. Her husband, who travels for work five days a week, casually dismisses her fears from faraway motel rooms. As the mother's symptoms intensify and her temptation to give in to her new dog impulses peak, she struggles to keep her altered canine identity secret. I don't think this main character is turning into this dog. She's goofy. <laughs> She's a goofy girl. Seeking a cure at the library, she discovers the mysterious academic tome, which becomes her Bible, and meets a group of mommies who are involved in MLM marketing schemes, and maybe more than what they seem. Interesting, I feel like this is going to tackle a couple things. <laughs> okay, I only have Night Bitch, so I think I will just start with this one, um, do some more research, see what else is catching my eye, grab anything else if I have it. I don't think I do, and I'll let you know how it's goes. Um, one book I was seeing a lot is um, Bunny by Mona Awad. <sighs> you know, I didn't like it. I read it a few years ago, but I wonder. My tastes have changed, you know, and I feel like the more you read, like, you just become a better reader and you understand things differently. So maybe I'll see if I still have it and grab that as well. If I have this book, in my car, it's because truthfully I was gonna get rid of it. Let's see, got a little book. Oh, I do still have it. So I have a Bunny by Mona Awad. <sighs> I wonder if I will like it now, like I was saying, and with the understanding that it's a weird book on purpose, you know? Like, I remember hearing it was weird and strange and thinking the same thing, but I wasn't like understanding anything and like tracking it. So I wonder, if I will have a different experience this go around. The other one I saw a few times was Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. And I wasn't a fan of this either. So I hope like, I hope this isn't like an, an ominous sign. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do this one again, um, just because I read it within the last six months maybe. Um, so I don't really feel called to reread this, but proof, I've got weird books for weird girls. <laughs> it's been a couple days since I last chatted with you about uh, weird books for weird girls. Uh, it worked kind of a lot. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I have today off, one more day of work, and then I've got some more days off, so we got this. Um, you might hear some snoring. I have a puppy next to me sweeping. So cute. I'm uh, just trying to find a quiet, cozy corner to chat in because I have like dishes going and laundry, and my husband's game is getting intense. <laughs> I was hearing him. <laughs> oh. But uh, 
yeah, so update on the reading vlog. Um, since we last spoke, I did a little bit more research on like kind of weird books. Uh, I watched some more TikToks and then I also just looked through um, my Goodreads to see just like odd, unique things I had added previously. And I've got a few books that I'm excited to check out. But since we last spoke, I have read almost 100 pages for Night Bitch. Um, and I finished part one. So um, there are no chapters in this book. I don't know if that format will change later. I don't know. It seems like it's going to be parts. Um, but I've dog-eared so much. There are so many good, like, sentences and great writing and, like, whew, like, a gut-punching moments in this story about motherhood. Um, I would say that's definitely one of the main themes that we're investigating. Our main character, she's unnamed so far, like this far into the book, she's unnamed, but I feel like I know her and I wonder if that was intentional to like not get her name so she could be someone that we can relate to or almost like be in a way. So she is struggling, dealing with motherhood, um, identity loss after motherhood, and turning into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she's already exhibiting canine features um, and I don't know like what direction Rachel's going with this so like on one hand like I could see her choosing like animal part you know of our character turning into a dog as like a vessel to explore motherhood um, and to like draw parallels from and it is like truly happening our character is actually turning into a dog and like that's how she's choosing to explore it um, or if like at the end of the book, the character, like all these canine experiences she's having, like it, I don't know if they're actually gonna be real or not. So that's like the other thought I'm having is like, is this all in the character's head? Like, are these animal things really going on? Is this a metaphor for like changing after motherhood or losing yourself? Is it like trying to show postpartum rage and um, depression? Um, like how you change afterwards like so I don't know which way the story is going so far it seems like our character is actually turning into a dog so <laughs> um, I'll be interested to see how that like finally plays out um, but I'm really liking this book and I'm mad it's been on my shelf for so long <laughs> um, but at the same time I don't know like I don't know sometimes I think books find you when they need to um, so I don't know like if I would have enjoyed this as much as if I had read it a few years ago I am reading this book as someone who is not a mother and someone who's like thinking about motherhood like is this for me i don't know i really like this novel though because it's so raw uh it feels real it feels authentic um even though i'm missing like that experience of like having a child um it feels like i can like empathize with it and understand where our character's coming from and understand some of the hardships she's going through. Like I mentioned, it very much addresses identity, which is one challenge I've heard mothers go through is a loss of identity of who they are, you know, because now they're just so focused on this, this baby and raising this human, um, their body, how that changes, not feeling like their own person anymore. That is very much a theme in this novel. Also like the feminine rage that like oozes, oozes off the page is so good it's so good like i'm angry anxious frustrated with our main character it's hard to explain but sometimes when i'm reading i just get these like it's almost like a light bulb moment it's very subtle but it's just like a ah okay and like it's just a feeling that i get when i'm potentially reading a new favorite or just reading something special and i got this feeling on page one um <laughs> like immediately um because i feel like that's how powerful rachel's writing is so this is how the book starts and i think it's great when she had referred to herself as night bitch she meant it as a good-natured self-depreciating joke because that's the sort of lady she was a good sport able to poke fun at herself definitely not uptight not wound really tight, not so freakishly tight that she couldn't see the humor in a lighthearted, not meant as an insult situation. But in the days following this naming, she found the patch of coarse black hair sprouting from the base of her neck and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> 
Um, so that just like instantly got me just the, the style and like there's no quotations in this novel either, which is kind of interesting. The main character is sometimes referred to as the mother. Like I said, you feel like you know her, which is so interesting because I don't know her name. She was the director of an art gallery and ended up becoming a stay-at-home mom. Uh, she tried to make it work for a while, but it wasn't working out for baby. She, like she was struggling with pumping, like was essentially running herself ragged, trying to work two jobs, 40 hours in an art gallery, plus evenings, late nights, early morning meetings, and then like raise this small human. Uh, so the husband made more money. And so they decided she would be the stay-at-home mom. And he travels for work. So Monday through Friday, he's out of town sleeps in a hotel. She's a single mom, essentially five days a week. He comes home on the weekend and then he leaves again come Monday. So, I mean, that's a huge adjustment already. I mean, having a baby, changing, you were working full-time, now your mom full-time, like that's a lot. And our character very much misses art and loved her job uh, and still daydreams about it. It's interesting. There's just, ugh, I'll read you a few more quotes. I hope you don't mind. This part, she sees an old colleague, Sal or Sally, that she used to work with. And um, Sally's like, how's it going? Like, I haven't seen it forever. How's baby? Like, oh my gosh. And so this is our main character. She wanted to tell the girl, it's complicated. I'm now a person I never imagined I would be. And I don't know how to square that. I would like to be content, but instead I am stuck inside a prison of my own creation where I torment myself endlessly until I am binge eating fig newtons at midnight to keep from crying. I feel as though societal norms, gendered expectations, and the infuriating bluntness of biology have forced me to become this person, even though I'm having a hard time parsing how precisely I arrived at this place. I am angry all the time. I would one day like to direct my own artwork towards a critique of these modern day systems that articulate all of this, but my brain no longer functions as it did before the baby. I am really dumb now. I am afraid I will never be smart or happy or thin again. I am afraid I might be turning into a dog. Instead, she said, smiling, I love it. I love being a mom. Like, <laughs> like that just gives me fucking chills because, oh, like, oh. And I think, I think what I like about this so much is how raw and real it is. And it's not afraid to say those things and to voice this rage and anger and frustration at society, you know, expectations for mothers, from parents, um, how mom and dad have different roles, um, how you should just be happy, be happy to be a stay at home mom. And she's like, I'm not fucking happy. Like, and you feel that most of the conversations, to be fair, I haven't really had very many deep conversations about motherhood and raising children. Um, like I've had a couple, so like I don't think I'm naive to some of the struggles that occur with parenthood, but at the same time, most of the conversations are very surface level. Like I just don't hear these struggles talked about very often, um, at least in my personal life, um, or even really just in general. Um, and like I said, I, it could be because I'm not asking the right questions, um, but like, I, don't know, I feel like someone could read this and be like, ew, like icky, like mom shouldn't feel that way. Like it's a blessing, but like you're allowed to be frustrated and angry and like it can still be a blessing and still be incredibly challenging. And I like how Rachel is not afraid to maybe share the darker thoughts that our character's having. Um, like I like that she's writing about it. The, I, what the fuck, LOL. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know if, if you if you're a mama and you've read this like I would be super curious to know what you think or if any dads have read this like because she like addresses frustrations with her partner <laughs> so that would be interesting just to see like what parents think because I have a very like one-sided view of this novel but I'm freaking loving it I'm obsessed I'm hoping to finish it in the next couple days um, cause it's, I think it's about 200 pages long or so. Yeah. 240, 238. So I'm hoping to finish this soon. Um, cause it's really good. And I just like, can't wait to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> Hi friends. Okay. So we, oh my God, sorry. We are at a local bookshop and I'm going to try to find some more weird books for weird girls. We're going to do it. Uh, bringing the middle part back today. This guy, I don't know what he's doing, but. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna go find a couple books. I wanna take you inside the bookstore. Let's go.
precariously balanced on like a bunch of things in my bathroom. Um, uh, because we're gonna chat about my bitch. Oh my God, let me grab it. One second. So I left you at part one and I could not stop. I couldn't stop. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh. This book was fantastic. Um, <laughs> I want to read you like every single thing I tabbed, but at that point I might as well just like read you the book because everything is amazing. <laughs> Part two, so our main character, mother, or she's officially like going by night bitch now. Um, she like is officially turning into a dog um, and kind of embracing this other side. Um, and then she joins in um, on, the, on the mommies, on the book mommies in, um, selling herbs so i kind of like that nod to like mommy entrepreneurs and um like selling stuff um like multi-level marketing things um because like while you might look at that and be like look at these moms you're ridiculous like what else are they supposed to do if they want to work right like I think that's like the great dilemma of our age. It's like you either raise stay at home mom or someone else raises your kids. Like it's very challenging to find jobs that allow you to stay home, allow you flexible hours, um, pay like decent pay. Um, if they don't provide childcare, like if it's something you have to like go into an office for, like, like then you might as well not even work because it's like thousands of dollars a month. Like, <laughs> so like, it, it kind of addresses that um like these you know like the they're selling herbs in this book so like the selling of herbs like gives them a sense of purpose it gives them something to do oh this part's funny <laughs> oh, but night bitch is thinking about going to like the mommies to like hear the pitch on herbs and um she's like i don't want to get sucked into some herbal remedy hustle, yet the prospect of camaraderie she had to admit was the smallest bit enticing, despite her formal disavowal of mom friends. There must be at least one mom cynical enough to sip wine with her in a corner and crack dark jokes about killing cats and shooting on lawns. Just one. That's all she needed, all she could hope for. <laughs> um, like, even just, like, the the humor and the reality, like, like, oh my god, so good to see you. Like, the texts, like, don't miss it on this opportunity. Like, she really, like, leans into that in this section of the book. So they're, like, at the herbal pitch, and, like, they're all drinking and whatever. And so, like, you know, like, why, why do you want to join our team? And so my bitch is, like, I accidentally killed her cat this week, she said. And it was a breaking point for me, I guess you could say. I just need some balance, some structure, and looking for stability. The room settled into a deeper silence, whether because of some of the mothers had passed out in day drunk swoons there in the ever soft carpeting or because some were appalled by her admon admission. It was hard to say. I let her par pet parakeet go accidentally, the drunken floor Jan said, putting air quotes around accidentally and masking a face. I let the fish die, Babs on the couch admitted, gesturing with a wine glass, benign neglect. But I didn't want to take care of them, clean their bowl. The kids didn't care. It was their job to take care of the thing. I stepped on Percy, Poppy admitted quietly, only loudly enough for Night Bitch to hear. What was Percy? Night Bitch asked. A dribble, she whispered. <laughs> like, like, I think that is so relatable. Like, for anything, like you think you're alone in something and then all of a sudden you're drunk and telling people how your animals died and like how it was kind of your fault. And you realize, oh, okay, like maybe I'm not so bad. <laughs> oh my God, things got so intense last night. Look, I want to really shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was saying. I think I'm rambling. So, <laughs> I don't know what to fucking say. Um, okay, I think I need to tell you what I thought without spoilers and then spoil a few things because like I can't not like talk about this without spoilers i think this is a fantastic book um it was just strange enough for me um i don't I, I still don't really know what's truth and what's reality um i have some theories 
um, things were like kind of wrapped up, but like there's like a couple unresolved things I'm just not sure about. And I think that's kind of cool. Cause then that just like leaves me thinking about it and like wondering what the author meant. It is a little gory, nothing really bothered me, but there's definitely some gore, um, some animals, specifically some bunnies don't really make it out of the book alive. <laughs> I have to catch my drift. The writing style is very interesting because it's like almost like stream of consciousness. Um, there's no like quotation marks when people are talking. Our main character remains unnamed until she starts embodying Night Bitch. Um, and then she just refers to herself as that. I never would have expected this book to be so deep for like 250 pages. Like I feel like what I got out of this book it's pretty insane for how short it is. Uh, Rachel Yoder really packs a punch um, and she covers like everything from like motherhood rage, loss of identity um, to like adult female friendships as a parent, division of labor, giving up your career, like to be a stay at home mom, finding your art again. Like she really covers so much in this book and it's insane. I can't remember if I said this earlier or not, but I could see maybe like this book turning some people off or just like, it just might not be for them as far as like, maybe they're like really happy as a mom. <laughs> like, um, but I think for those that feel lost and want like a real raw look at how things can feel, while there's not like any sound advice as far as what to do, I feel like it's just validating to know that you're not alone feeling what you're feeling, but it is cool to like see her like kind of step into her own, um, ask for help, set boundaries, come to terms with what is going on in her life now. I think it's up to you as you read it to decide like what you think about her becoming a dog. I felt like that element was done well. It was really interesting, um, but it didn't feel like cheesy i don't know if you like go into this book knowing it's kind of strange i think it'll i think it'll work okay let's talk spoilers though because what the fuck <laughs> oh my god there so like there's a couple different overlapping like storylines happening right you're following night bitch as she's struggling with motherhood like her toddler's insane <laughs> that's as all toddlers are she like turns into a dog and it channels this night bitch energy of like giving into her, her urges, like doing what she wants. Like, fuck this, I'm not cleaning the house. Like you're on night night duty now when you're home on the weekends. Like I'm not doing it anymore. She, she, she starts to like lean into this and goes on like nightly dog escapades and like kills some animals and like eats them and like eats raw meat. So she's very much like leaning into these like carnal urges. And it does seem like she's turning into a dog. It's like she is shape-shifting, but like there's a part of me that's like still not sure because like I could see like her really believing this happening and then like it would almost be like when the movie like pans away um, it just shows her like naked crawling around on all fours like <laughs> it's like I'm not I'm not exactly sure like how this is playing out. So that's what she's doing and then she finds this book and it's like a field guide to magical women and she starts like reading it. And so she learns about these blue women, werewolf women in the mountains. Like she learns about all these different magical women from this author, Wanda White. And so she starts trying to email Wanda because she's obsessed now. Like, have you ever met or like ran into like, like housewives who turn into dogs? Like, I haven't seen this in your book yet, but if you have, that would really, really help me out. <laughs> So she starts like obsessing over Wanda, emailing her, emailing her. Wanda's not getting back. So she almost just is like emailing her what she's thinking. So like, that's like one thing that is happening. And then she meets the book mommies and gets into the herbs and like joins their, their sales team, right? But there's a few times where she's out as a dog that she sees another dog who smells like strawberries and, ha and is a golden retriever and that's, what Jen, that's what one of the mommies smells like. She smells like strawberries because she's got a really good nose now as a dog and like can pick up on those scents. So she's like, there's no way like Jen Jen, like the Jen mommy selling herbs is turning into a dog at night too. Like there's no way like, and how do I ask her that? Like if I just ask her, are you turning into a dog at night? Like 
don't think I'm fucking crazy. The part where I fucking lost my mind. I lost my mind. I was screaming. <laughs> So she's at the park and she sees a golden retriever, a basset hound, and a collie all clustered by the pond. And she's like, oh my God, like it's them. It's the other mommies, right? Because this is not the first time she's seen these dogs and like had some weird coincidences. She took the retriever's head in her hands and looked into its eyes. Jen, she whispered, and the dog blinked, playing it cool. They eyed each other for a time until Nightbitch said, okay, fine, go on then, and slapped the dog's haunches. She searched to the edges of the park for anyone calling after these dogs walking towards them, tossing a ball or offering them a treat, but each figure was engaged with some other animal in the process of being chased or chasing them, hollering, whistling, throwing something or picking up poop. No one seemed to be any way attached to the doggy trio, save for a lone figure at the farthest reach of the dog park, standing quite still, notebook in hand, watching the scene unfold. It was Wanda. What the fuck? It was Wanda? What the fuck? What the fuck? I lost my ever-loving mind. Like, no wonder one does not reply to her. You're her fucking subject. She's studying. <laughs> oh my god. That was such a great fucking twist. I couldn't, like, I could not remain calm after that one. <laughs> like, I didn't think, like, I didn't know how, like, the book and Wanda, like, would all come into play. But I was not expecting that. Oh my god, that was so good. It was so good. The book ends with Night Bitch doing a very strange performative art piece. So she does a piece for the moms in the community. And then Jen, one of the mommies, ends up being her publicist. And they like now like they go around doing this like performative thing. And it's strange and weird people describe like hallucinating during this event there's like all these weird things like people have write about her performance and like what it means so she does end up getting back into her art <laughs> oh my gosh it was so strange so there's a sweet moment where jen like confines a night bitch about how she's like gotten into like financial trouble everyone thinks she's doing well but she's just like been buying her own stock her husband doesn't know that like they're kind of in trouble financially as well. And so she's confining into her. And like at first night, bitch is like, oh my gosh, like I thought she was gonna confess finally that she's been running around to like golden retriever at night, like me. <laughs> like, that was like Jen's big reveal. But they have this like heart to heart and night bitch is like, no, like you're gonna tell your husband what's going on. We're gonna, we're gonna get you out of this. And then I like, then you're gonna work for me. And we're gonna like do this thing. We're gonna take charge because like, I'm gonna need you for my art. This paragraph really does like embody like the pace of the story and like the stream of consciousness, almost like this manic energy. So this is what it, this is what happens. <laughs> First read this book. Now look, this is how we run. This is how I appear at night. Here are my skins. Here are some props. Here are my ideas and dreams. See this dance, this gesture, this animal, this spell. Learn them all. Good. Take your clothes off. Run. Pounce. Roll in the mud. Smell your way through. Here, a mouse. There, a chewed wad of gum. Good to lick. Lap from the puddle, then jump from the stream. Follow it to the dark alley. Crouch. Growl. Pace. Pause. Here is prey. Here is your power. Here is how I kill an animal. Don't flinch. Don't turn away. Look more closely. Look at it. The heart of violence. The heart of need. Meditate. Sleep. Or don't. Here is how to grow your hair. Here is how to lose it. Listen, more, be still, then move. Examine your teeth, pet your own soft hair. Demand more, do less. Tell, don't ask, howl, howl, howl the moon. Wanda White says the mysteries of the universe are revealed in the mundane. The body, this day, the grass is the sky. Forget civilization. This is just women and nature, her very own nature. Oh my God, Jen murmured then in the moonlight face streaked with mud. Oh my God, it's you. <laughs> Like she was the fucking dog that whole time. And like the, it's you, like, oh my God, like I've been looking for you. <laughs> oh my God. So good. Oh my God, so good. Ugh. She ends up like showing her husband like what she is. Um, and he's like, oh my gosh, amazing. And yeah, and then they just like do this like strange performance art piece. But it's interesting because there's a few times where um, night bitch is like 
thinking about her next art project. Um, and she's like, I think, it'll, I think it'll be a performative piece. Like she really does want to like address motherhood and rage and all that. And like, that's what she ends up doing. And the, the art piece itself is very strange. I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, there, no bunnies make it out of this, but oh my God. Like if I was in school and had to write like theses and papers or whatever, like I would write something on this book. Like I feel like there's so many themes and things you could like dive into. Like, fuck, I'm not in school and I might just write a paper. <laughs> Like, whatever. So I did a little bit more research last night. Um, the author has written a few other things, um, essays, and I think she has a journal. Um, but this is her first debut novel, which is pretty awesome. I was thinking as I'm reading this, I'm like, wow, I really want A24 to make this into a movie. I just feel like they have like a really spooky filming style that's like unsettled and like kind of weird, you know? Then as it turns out, Amy Adams, is producing, or no, she's in, I don't know if she's producing, but she's gonna be Night Bitch in a movie with Hulu, allegedly this fall, fall of 2024, allegedly. I couldn't find any trailer. I couldn't find any other updates other than it's happening. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know, oh my gosh. I hope, I hope it's weird. Um, yeah, I hope it's strange. I'm very excited. Oh my God, I'm just like fucking obsessed right now. <laughs> and I was scared. I thought because I didn't really like Bunny or Our Wives Under the Sea, I was like, weird books might just not be for me, but like, what the fuck, this book? Oh, this book is so good. First of all, three books. This was $68. What the fuck is that? $68? I like to buy stuff, but no, but it's $70. Whatever, it's fine. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm still annoyed. So I picked up, first of all, this is just a fun book. Um, I saw Sydney before I'm talking about it as a thriller, but it's like an interactive thriller. So you have to like fold the page down. There's commandments for solving crime. And so already like I, I flipped through a few pages and it seems pretty funny. Um, and she really liked it. And it sounds like this is a pretty loved book on YouTube at least right now. Um, so I saw this and did get it. So this is just like a bonus book I'm showing you, <laughs> but hopefully I'll pick this up soon. But I did want to get some more weird books. Um, and I've got a huge list on my Goodreads of like 30 strange things. That would be fun to check out at some point. Um, but I did get La Fauna by Otessa Moshveg. This is about Merrick. He's the abused and delusioned son of a village shepherd. There's a, a midwife who can apparently receive like secret knowledge, violence, uh, famine, life and death and like spirit worlds. I don't know, it sounds like it's gonna be very interesting. That this tells that tells me nothing about what it's, <laughs> what's gonna happen. So we'll just see, just along for the ride, honestly. Um, and then I got Looking Sound Glass by Catriona Warda. I read The Last House on Needless Street last year sometime. I did not like my reading experience of that book. Um, it was kind of hard to get through. Like the tone, the writing style, like I switched between audio and um, reading <laughs> words. <laughs> um, and it just was very strange. But, but when I got to the end and figured out what was happening, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? And like, I immediately wanted to go back and reread it to see what I missed because it was a very unique twist that I did not see coming. So just with like how that book ended and like, I seriously cannot stop thinking about it. Like I want, I want to reread it. And so I'm like, let me just try another one by her. Um, because I think across the board, she's kind of a strange author. In a cottage overlooking the windswept main coast, Wilder Harlow has begun the last book he will ever write. It sounds like something happens uh, in this cove. Um, he starts seeing things from notes hidden in, in the cottage, an old friend now dead, a woman with dark hair drowning in the icy waters below calling for help, entire chapters he doesn't recall typing appearing overnight. Who or what is haunting Wilder? It sounds like we're gonna have a kind of an unreliable main character, some strangeness, and so just, yeah, just with how The Last House on Needless Street went, I'm curious to just check something else out by her. Those will be hopefully my next weird books. I forgot to mention, I 
read and listened to this. So I was doing some chores for the last half of this book, um, listening, and it's narrated by Cassandra Campbell. I thought she did great. Um, and I actually like read and listened together a few times. And then if I heard something I liked, I just went and found it and tabbed it. That is book number one for weird books for weird girls. And I think it was a smashing success. Absolutely smashing. <laughs> That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this reading vlog and hanging out with me and letting me rant and ramble and chat spoilers and not spoilers or try to about Night Bitch. Um, God, that was a really good book. I'm still thinking about it and it's been a couple days since I finished. I think I've picked out my next weird book and I will see you in the next one. Bye!